Before we begin, I want to wish a happy life to the person celebrating their birthday today. Without further ado, let's dive right into the storyline. This interesting thriller movie tells the story of a girl named Jill, who is the only victim to survive an abduction by a serial killer. However, the police are skeptical about her story and believe that it's just in Jill's head. A year later, while she tries to live her life and face her trauma, the same serial killer returns and this time abducts her sister. One day, despite feeling paranoid, Jill frequently returns to the forest park where she was once held captive by the serial killer, attempting to pinpoint the exact spot of her captivity. This behavior angers and worries her sister Molly, who is concerned about Jill's mental health. Molly then persuades Jill to join her for dinner and meet her cousin's boyfriend, hoping that it might make Jill feel better. However, Jill appears uninterested in her sister's offer because her trauma still lingers in her head. We can clearly see her paranoia when she's out using her sister's car, and also in martial arts class, she loses control when sparing with a guy. Realizing that she needs to relax, she finally agrees to join her sister for dinner tomorrow. Jill then goes to work in a restaurant. While serving customers, she is recognized by a customer who finds her face familiar, but she just responds casually and continues to serve a male customer. Later, he leaves a big tip for both Jill and her friend Sharon. Sharon tells Jill that he is a regular customer and always leaves big tips for her. As we can see, Jill also takes an antidepressant pill to help her feel better. After work, Jill goes straight home. But when she gets there, she can't find her sister anywhere in the house. She checks the back door, but it's locked. Jill starts to worry when she sees that Molly's clothes haven't been changed. She quickly grabs her phone from her bag, and we notice she always has a gun with her. Jill leaves a voicemail on her sister's phone asking her to call back and does the same to her sister's boyfriend, Billy. Then, she spots Molly's earring on the floor and gets really worried. Jill then takes a photograph of Molly in her room and rushes to the police station. At the police station, she talks to a division unit that handled her abduction case, which includes Sergeant Powers, Detective Erica, and is led by Lieutenant Ray. Jill begins to tell them that her sister has been abducted by the same serial killer who abducted her before. When asked why she is so sure, Jill explains that he wants her because she's the only one who survived and knows his secret. Jill continues to explain that her sister wouldn't leave the house in the middle of the night, especially since she has an important exam today. Jill is very certain that the serial killer must have thought that she was alone in the house because of her car in the driveway. After explaining in detail, the police seem skeptical of Jill's story, and their doubts increase when there is no sign of a break-in at the house, leading them to think that Molly is just with her boyfriend. Jill begins to get angry because no one believes her, and as she's about to leave, a new detective named Hood approaches her and offers to help pull her file. He asks Jill to call him if she needs anything and also takes Jill's number. Shortly after Jill received a call from Billy, Molly's boyfriend, Saying he wasn't with Molly, the detective still made excuses, suggesting Molly might have two boyfriends. This angered Jill, and she declared she would search for the serial killer herself. After storming out, Detective Hood seemed worried. But Lieutenant Ray told him Jill wouldn't find the killer because he doesn't exist. Later, Powers revealed that last year, Jill was found near Forest Park covered in mud by a hiker. She was screaming about being abducted and thrown down a hole in the woods. She also claimed there were human remains down there. But after a full search team was called, they found nothing. Moreover, Jill couldn't identify the killer at all. Furthermore, after losing both of her parents, she ended up in a psych ward for a couple of months. Not long after Jill arrives home, Billy comes to ask about Molly. He checks Molly's class list and waits to see if she shows up for her final exam. Billy then notices the pajamas that Jill said Molly was wearing. Jill explains that she's wearing pajamas with a different stripe pattern. Billy looks suspicious because he's sure that's the only pajamas Molly used to wear. After Billy leaves, Jill asks her neighbor if she saw her sister last night, but she went to sleep earlier. The neighbor suggests asking another neighbor named Conrad. Jill then visits Conrad and tells him that she lost her bike last night. Conrad informs Jill that he heard honking twice in front of her house. He continues, saying that the car was a locksmith van. After a brief search on the internet, she manages to identify the van Conrad described and finally finds one on the street. Jill immediately chases the van and tries to see the driver. When she arrives at the locksmith office, Jill grabs her gun and tells the driver that she is just a customer and wants to meet the boss. As she meets with the boss, Jill makes up a story about her grandmother's car being stolen and asks if the driver of a locksmith van parked near her house saw the thief. The boss then calls his son and asks if he used their van last night, to which the son denies. However, the son's behavior becomes suspicious when he asks Jill about the crime committed. Eventually, the boss asks Jill to leave his office. When outside, Jill decides to check the van and finds a receipt and duct tape similar to what the kidnapper used on her when she was held captive in a hole. Suddenly, the son shows up and Jill confronts him with her gun, asking why he lied about not using the van. The son explains that someone named Digger rented his van last night, and he returned the van after a few hours. He also describes Digger as tall and wearing a hat. Jill then leaves after the son's father shows up. Afterward, 
Detective Hood receives a report informing him that Jill is at the locksmith office. Meanwhile, Detective Powers is speaking with Jill over the phone, eager to hear what she found in the locksmith's van. Jill reads out the items listed on the receipt she discovered in the van, duct tape, rope, and a lantern. Based on these items, she concludes that the van was used by the serial killer known as Digger. At the same time, Hood hands Powers a report detailing Jill's situation. Powers becomes angry upon learning that Jill brought a gun and instructs her to come to the police station. However, Jill disregards Powers' orders and abruptly hangs up the phone. On the other hand, Hood is seen taking Jill's case files and calls her, saying that he is now in charge of investigating Molly's disappearance. Hood also tries to convince Jill that he wants to help her and asks where she is. However, Jill doesn't believe him and continues to look for her sister herself. After some time, Jill arrives at the store where Digger bought the items listed on the receipt. As Jill steps out of her car, Billy calls to inform her that Molly isn't in the exam class and suggests checking on Molly's classmate named Trey, who also didn't attend the exam. Jill enters the store and once again makes up a story to get information about Digger. Because there are no surveillance cameras, Jill can't see what Digger looks like. Fortunately, the manager had a conversation with Digger and can describe his car. The manager also mentions that Digger lives at the Royal Hotel. Meanwhile, outside, the cop notices Jill's car and calls for backup. When Jill wants to return to her car, she sees cops already waiting for her and decides to go back to the manager to ask for the restroom. As Jill is escorted to the bathroom, the cops also enter the store. While trying to find a way to escape, the manager escorts the cops to the restroom, and upon arrival, the cops begin to ask Jill to surrender. However, Jill already manages to escape and runs away. Jill keeps running away, and when she sees two schoolgirls, she pretends to be friends with them and successfully fools the cops. Jill continues her run and goes to Trey's dorm, who Billy mentioned earlier as Molly's classmate. After being told that Molly isn't with him, Jill forces her way inside to search for her sister but ends up finding someone else. Afterward, Jill takes a bus to find where Digger lives while laying low from the police. She also decides not to take her pills. After getting off the bus, she then speaks to a skateboarder and describes Digger's car to him. Fortunately, the skater recognizes the car, which belongs to a guy named Jim, and he shows her where Jim lives. Upon arrival, Jill cautiously enters Jim's seemingly empty room. She then takes out her gun and notices duct tape, triggering memories of when she was held captive in the hole, screaming for help. She continues to look around and notices a paper matchbox from her restaurant, remembering one of her customers who gave her a big tip earlier. Suddenly, Jill gets startled by a guy who claims he is a janitor. Afterward, the janitor informs her that Jim has already moved up north. Jill then rents the janitor's car to continue her search for Jim. After a while, Jill receives a call from her psychiatrist, persuading her to stop searching for the serial killer as she also believes that he does not exist. During their conversation, Jill has another flashback when she starts digging and finds human bones. Her psychiatrist continues to ask Jill to come meet her. Surprisingly, Jill tells her that she is already downstairs and agrees to meet with the condition that Sergeant Powers and his men leave, which the psychiatrist denies, stating that there are no police. Then, after being told that Jill is downstairs, Powers immediately goes down, but it turns out Jill is somewhere else. Jill then meets her friend Sharon and tells her that her sister disappeared last night, and the guy who gave them big tips is the same guy who took her and her sister, his name is Jim. Sharon then reveals that she knows him because he is a regular customer, and sometimes they have a little chat. Jim had told her that he wanted to move out because he didn't like the women here. Sharon then remembers that Jim gave his phone number to her. After giving it to Jill, Jill rushes to her car and leaves. As she continues her search, Jill is suddenly noticed by the police, and a chase ensues. After a while, Powers receives a report about the pursuit and prepares to head to the location. However, when asking about Hood's whereabouts, Erica mentions that he is currently visiting his sick grandmother. Back to the chase, Jill parks her vehicle at a house and flees, then returns to Sharon's house to borrow her car. Initially hesitant, Sharon eventually agrees after Jill persuades her by expressing her determination to find her sister, despite no one believing her story. After some time, Jill calls Jim without hesitation and introduces herself, then asks where he is holding her sister captive. Jim casually responds as if he doesn't understand what Jill is talking about, then provokes her by mentioning that now he remembers Jill as the woman from last year who claimed to be kidnapped but no one believed. Jim suggests that Jill should meet him in person so she can feel relieved and satisfied that he is not what Jill thinks he is. Jill seems to gather her courage and agrees to meet him by following Jim's instructions on where he is. Some time later, Jill suddenly receives a call from Billy, informing her that Molly is already home. Jill is shocked and relieved to hear this, but when she asks to speak with her sister, Billy tells her that Molly is in the shower and can't talk right now. Jill begins to feel suspicious and urges Billy to tell her the truth. After the detective goes outside to make a call, Billy reveals that the police are parked outside her house and don't care about Molly, they just want Jill to turn herself in. After hearing that, Jill's determination grows stronger, and she tells Billy that she is on her way to meet the guy who took Molly. 
Billy then tells Powers that Jill is meeting with the guy who kidnapped her and her sister, and starts to believe that maybe Jill is right. However, Powers is still skeptical about it. Back to Jill, she finally arrives at Forest Park and starts to check an abandoned ranger station where Jim told her he stays but can't find him. Suddenly, she gets a call from Powers who has had enough of her. He then reveals to Jill that Molly might not be able to stand being around her anymore, so that's why she left. Powers also confesses that it was his idea to ask Molly to live together and keep an eye on Jill, and only with that arrangement could Jill be released from the mental hospital. Jill suddenly receives another phone call from Jim, and he provides her with further direction deep into the forest. Jill doesn't seem to hesitate and just follows along where Jim leads her. While still pretending, Jim asks Jill how she escaped. Jill then explains that it was after the sun went down and when the kidnapper went down into the hole, she found a bone and seized the opportunity to stab him. She then climbed up and ran away in the darkness and cold. After Jim tells Jill she's close, her phone loses signal. Jill decides to walk and search for where her sister is being held captive. Eventually, we see Molly struggling to loosen her bonds and finally freeing herself. Meanwhile, Jill finally finds a campsite and is shocked to find a photo of her sister among other girls who appear to be captive. Jill then turns off her flashlight and notices a lantern. As she walks towards it, we see Molly crawling in the dark, surprisingly held captive under her own house all this time. This shocks everyone, especially Powers, who now believes that Jill has been telling the truth all along. Meanwhile, Jill finally finds the hole where she was held captive. When she looks down, she notices the body of another girl, whom she initially thinks is Molly. Suddenly, Jim pulls her down into the hole. Jill grabs her gun and manages to shoot Jim twice as she tries to climb up. After successfully climbing back up, Jill asks where her sister is. When Jim reveals that Molly is being held captive under her own house, she takes kerosene and sets the hole on fire. When Jill returns to her car, she receives a message that Molly is safe at home and decides to throw her gun. Afterward, she finally arrives home and reunites with her sister, whispering something to her. When Powers asks where her gun is and requests an explanation about what happened in the forest, Jill turns the tables and says that the guy she was meeting never existed, it was all in her head. The end. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more interesting movie recaps. See you in the next video.